Now, I don't know about you, but the very first time I saw this chart a while ago, you know what I said to myself? Who cares? No, really, I'm being honest. I said, who cares? Because I've never eaten a pound of olive oil. I've never eaten a pound of Oreos. I'm, I don't think I've ever eaten a pound of bread. I know I haven't eaten a pound of broccoli, so who cares? Right? Any of you thinking that? Okay, so I'm the only one. <laughs> Let me show you why it matters. Let's say I have a specific food. These are carrots. All right, this is a, you know, a couple cups. And uh, here I have a bowl of carrots. It's smaller. This is more like a cup. Now, when I compare these, is the amount of calories between the two bowls different? That was not a trick question. <laughs> Are the amount of calories different? Yes. And the point of this is any time I have a food and I change the serving size, what happens to the calories? It changes. It goes up or down depending on the serving size. So if I want to know calories, I also have to know the calories for every serving size I might ever eat of food, correct? Correct. But if I change the serving size, does the calorie density change? No. The calorie density does not change. It stays the same. Calorie density is what we call a constant. And in math, when you're doing equations, it's good to have a constant. So calorie density is a constant. So I may never eat a pound of olive oil, and I may never eat a pound of broccoli. But no matter how much broccoli I have and how much olive oil I have, will the olive oil always be 40 times more concentrated? That's the point of it. And I mean, just to put this in perspective for you, you might not eat a pound of olive oil, but has anybody in here ever eaten a tablespoon of olive oil? That tablespoon of olive oil have more calories packed into it than a full pound of broccoli, virtually. See the difference? So it doesn't matter whether you eat a pound or not. It's a constant that gives you perspective. Now, let's think for a minute. Which side of the chart do you think the foods are easier to overeat on? The left side or the right side? <laughs> the right side. We don't get a lot of broccoli bingers coming through here. <laughs> in fact, I think they died out in the, like, pal, you know, like the Neanderthal time. They were sitting eating their broccoli and a dinosaur got them. <laughs> so, right. How hard is it to overeat on broccoli? It's impossible. What'd you say? Pretty tough. Pretty tough. How hard is it to overeat on Oreos and almonds? Right. Now this doesn't make, okay, is it easy to overeat on almonds? Yes, but does that make almonds fattening? No, no, no. What if you only had one or two almonds? Would that be fattening? No, but I've never known any human being to eat one or two almonds. So are you more likely to overeat on the almonds than on the broccoli? See the issue, see why this is important? So calorie density is giving you a number, and since 1980, there's just been probably 100 studies on this. 50 or so came out of Penn State alone with Barbara Rolls. It's fascinating what you will see what happens with this info. In fact, here's one of the studies. She followed people over a few days to watch the amount of food they ate. She didn't tell them anything. She just watched them. And it turned out that regardless of what you ate, the amount of the weight of the food you ate it's pretty similar. So the amount, the weight of the food, this is food taken grams, was pretty similar over a few days. People eat a certain amount of food each day. But depending on whether it was high in calorie density, ED means energy density or calorie density, whether it was low or high, look what happened to the caloric intake. Because we ate a similar amount of weight of food, so if we change the calorie density, what happens to the calories we take in? It changes. See how important this is? So you still get to eat all you want, but if you change the calorie density, what happens to your caloric intake? It could go up or down, depending which way you go. So let us review. <laughs> you know, I stay up all night thinking of these things. 
So I appreciate a laugh or two occasionally. We're going to cover a lot. Uh, I just, I didn't get hugged enough as a kid. That's why I do this. OK, we're going to cover a lot today. So I just want to review, because I know some of you said, you know, last night that was a lot of information. So I want to make sure we get this. So let us <laughs> review. What we've learned so far is we want to avoid foods that are calorie rich and processed. <laughs> So our key point as of this moment is <laughs> cut the crap. I showed you that when we did a study and we asked you what you ate, you said that one third to one half of your calories come from here. And that's when we asked you. And we know when we ask you that you might lie. And when we look at it, fudge, you might fudge. No, that's not a good word either. So when we look at it other words, other ways, we know one half to two thirds of your calories are coming from here. So if this is where a half to two thirds of your calories are coming from, what's happening to everybody's weight? It's going up. No matter how much they're working out, if they're down at this end, correct? So you see what's happened in America? Now if you go back 30 years ago, how many of these calorie dense foods existed in the supermarket? Very few. So calorie density is becoming a very key concept. And just so we're going to see this a little later, but here's your breakouts, 400, 4 to 8, 8 to 12, and 12 and above. That's what you got to know. Very simple. And when they again looked at populations across the United States, here's what they found. Now they split this up between high fat and low fat, and they use 30% because when you're out in the world and you do regular studies, what do they think is the cutoff? 30. I would have chosen a different one. But look, they wanted to look at the, per, the per, prevalence of obesity based on the level of fat and the amount of fruits and vegetables, because what's the foods lowest in calorie density? So the people who ate the most fruits and vegetables had to have the lower calorie dense diets. So the lowest prevalence of, prevalence of over obesity is in the low fat diet that eats the most fruits and vegetables. And by vegetables, that also included foods like, you know, oatmeal and all those. Starchy vegetables, too. Interesting, isn't it? The more fat you ate and the less fruits and vegetables, look what happened to the amount of obesity. So then they took these numbers and they translated them to calorie density. What was the calorie density of their diets? And we find out the group that had the least obesity that had the lowest fat and the highest intake of fruits and vegetables had a calorie density of 1.22 grams calories per gram, which in English is 550 calories per pound. What did I tell you was the midpoint? Interesting, isn't it? 